Hey everybody, welcome back and tonight we're back on our draw knife after I did a bunch of work in the house when I got home, did some electrical work and stuff like that. Haven't run the camera in there because guys it is just too damn noisy with all the kids and everything it is just too loud. But uh, anyway, in this one it's going to be a really short one tonight, uh, super short compared to normal. But I figured I would go through and show you, uh, explain some of the heat treating stuff now. I'm going to give you my understanding of it and how it all works and I'll show you the results. I'll show you the results so stay tuned I'll catch you on the other side. Alright, so that was pretty easy. So we used our B-Tank once again to do an edge quench. I had an A32 tip on there. I tried an A11 at first. It was just too small to keep the heat on the edge of the blade long enough and enough of it so I could work the entire blade at once. So what we're left with, let's get this kind of close. That's what we have right now. That's after a heat treat. That's polished off because we're going to have to temper this. And you want to polish it when you're done or at least sand it down to bare metal so that you can see your temper colors. When we are done with this, this cutting edge right here, we're going to want this to be straw, like a good straw color. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between well, something that's been heat treated properly and a section of this where I wanted to leave it a little bit softer so that it... Um, doesn't just snap in your hands when you're using it because a draw knife and the way this one's designed you're gonna have a lot of pressure on these handles as you're pulling it and I want to make sure they're soft enough to withstand that now if you get the metal too hot when you're heat treating it's gonna come out of the uh, quench tank almost uh, really really light gray it's gonna be a little bit brighter you'll know it and what will happen is if you hit it drop it on the floor it's gonna be so hard Sometimes it'll break whatever you're working on right in half and when you look at that grain structure inside It's gonna look like sugar. It's almost gonna look like granulated sugar and uh, Don't ask me how I know but I can tell you I've done it a couple of times where I've just gotten it too hot Hence that's why I'm using the torch a little bit more for doing stuff like that Plus if I'm just out here for a heat treat, it's kind of a pain to get the coal forge running and all that just so I can do you know one blade but and the other thing I could use the gas forge but the reason I'm not using that for my heat treating is it heats this entire piece up all at once and I wanted to have these handles left soft and the spine a little bit softer than the actual cutting edge so if you've heat treated this properly and anybody who's watched forged in fire this is a big deal right so if you've heat treated this properly you hear how that just skates on there and if you look closer I can get you good well, let's see that is hard to see it uh, uh, damn autofocus 
Anyway, it doesn't even scratch the edge of the file, does it? But if I go down here where it's left soft, you hear that difference? That's because the file's biting right into it. And if you look, see those shiny spots there? I know we're out of focus. Um, those shiny spots, that's where the file's actually biting in. But if we go on this, nothing. It just skates and you want to check the whole edge. So that's the idea behind that. And it bites just a little bit on the spine. Not as uh, It's not biting as much as I'd like to for this, but that's how you know you've got a good heat treat. But like I said, you can't go too far. You, can, uh, you can't overheat it. And it can have results that you won't like. Like I said, ask me how I know. Anybody who's forged anything has probably done the same thing, especially starting out. But um, you don't need to get this thing lemon colored. I see a lot of videos where people get these things bright yellow. Like I said, the color of a lemon. Uh, lemon. That's, your, that's forge welding temperatures. You don't need them that hot to do your heat treat. You're just looking to get it just above magnetic. I, I, I could be wrong. And I'm kind of reaching, pulling this out of my head here. Uh, I want to say 1080 steel, which this is what this is. Something around 1,475 degrees. One of you guys who knows a little bit more about it, please feel free to comment. But I think it's somewhere around, around that range for the heat treat on this. And that information is in the heat treat app that you can get on your phone. Um, so anyway, we are really close on this. Uh, next video out, I want to get some handles on it. And finish sharpening it up. Polish it up and send it out. But uh, I'm much happier with this one. The other one I just wasn't happy with. This was way too thin and I was worried that it would just break on them, you know, in use. So I didn't want to send out a churd even though it's it's a giveaway, but still I don't want to send out a churd. You know, I want this thing, I want him to be able to hand it down to his sons and his sons hand it down to their sons. That's the whole idea. Um, I want to make something quality. If I'm going to put something out and put a tool in somebody's hands, I would like it to be a tool that I would want to use. And I think uh, I think that's just the way it should be. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm sorry for the shortness of it, but I just kind of got out here for a few minutes tonight. Had a little bit of time, so I figured I'd try to get this to a point where we can get to finishing it off and send it out. So have a good night everybody and I'll catch you on the next one.